I'd like to discuss the absolute healthiest foods that you should be eating. Now, how do we figure this out? So let's just take a look at what the definition of food is. Food is that which is eaten to sustain life, provide energy, and promote the growth and repair of tissue. So if you eat something that doesn't sustain life, that doesn't give you energy, that doesn't help your tissues grow and repair, it's not food. And if we take a look at what foods create the most disease? Well, ultra processed foods. That's a real polite way of saying junk foods. So before we get into the actual foods, what are ultra processed foods? The word ultra means to the extreme. Processed in the specialized definition of food means something that has been altered using either chemical or mechanical or heat or other methods to change something into something else. And so they can start out with corn and turn that into something that doesn't even resemble corn, okay? That's ultra processed. And I don't know why they can even call this food because it doesn't sustain life. You can't live on it. It doesn't give you energy. It makes you tired. There are basically no nutrients except for the few synthetic nutrients that they spray on it. And it doesn't promote growth, especially. And we're talking about like even a growing child that needs high quality amino acids and high quality fatty acids. So if we look at a scale from, I'm going to call it non-food, all the way to the other side of some whole food that has bioavailable nutrients. So that means it would have to have vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids, and other things too. And I think fiber um, might be important as well, simply because fiber is something that your microbes do eat. And I'm not talking about added fiber, just the fiber that comes within certain foods. But we do know the essential things, essential fats, essential proteins, but there's no essential carbohydrates. We can actually live without carbohydrates. On the flip side, there are some important nutrients in vegetables, vitamin C, folate, potassium, magnesium, and phytonutrients, which have a lot of additional interesting properties that go beyond just uh, basic nutrients, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, etc. However, that being said, you can find in grass-fed beef a lot of phytonutrients. That's right. There's not a lot of research in this area as far as the difference between the two uh, or the bioavailability, but they're in there, like I'm demonstrating right here in this picture, and you can see the level of phytonutrients in my cattle. And you can see it's much higher, especially than the grain fed. And this is probably because uh, my cattle get no grain. It's all grass fed, grass finished. And uh, even in eggs, right, you can get uh, certain phytonutrients, which are plant-based compounds. So you don't always have to get these phytonutrients from plants. Now, if you look at a vegan's diet, you can't really get all of the nutrients without adding or supplementing to a vegan diet, especially B12 and other nutrients that are not as bioavailable. And then we also have DHA, which is omega-3. And also uh, the amino acids are, are different from plant to animal. You can still do it being a vegan. I'm not saying that you can't, but it's just a little more difficult. You have to combine certain things to get the complete amino acid profile. The bottom line is there's just more quality amino acids in animal products than there are in plants. Now, in vegetables, you have also um, certain anti-nutrients, but for example, like cruciferous vegetables, you can cook them, you can steam them and reduce a lot of these uh, anti-nutrients. Nuts ha also have uh, anti-nutrients. Soak them overnight, it's called germination. Even roasting nuts reduce the anti-nutrients. On one extreme, we have the ultra-processed ingredients, right, which really is composed of three or four main ingredients with a lot of additional chemicals. So let me just give you one example. This was my favorite snack in college. Let's just take a look at what the ingredients are. Corn, vegetable oils, corn, canola, and or sunflower oil. So number one, realize that corn is not like sweet corn. Okay, it's called dent corn or field corn. Uh, you can't eat it. I mean, it's disgusting. So they're processing it to put it in a powder and then flavoring it and putting all sorts of things on it to make it taste edible. And then the seed oils are highly inflammatory. And then we have maltodextrin, 
It has worse effects on your blood sugars than actual sugar. It's highly processed. Monosodium glutamate, of course, just to stimulate your appetite. Artificial colorings, artificial flavorings, and natural flavorings, and then some other chemicals too. Now, what's interesting about this is take a look at the fats. I don't know if you can see. Total fats, 8 grams. That's per serving size, 12 chips. That's 10% of all the calories. I mean, people think that saturated fats is the worst thing, right, in here. But it has one gram. Then what is the, all the other fats in there? Unsaturated fatty acids. That's the thing that's creating a tremendous amount of damage in our bodies because it's the vegetable oils, highly processed, highly inflammatory. Yet when we think about junk foods, um, no one's really saying to avoid the unsaturated fats. It's all about the saturated fats. This is why some companies will say, hey, this junk food has no saturated fats. And you think, oh, wow, that's healthy. Mm, not quite. And the last thing they have on there is guaranteed fresh, okay? Guaranteed fresh, like like taking an apple off of a tree type fresh. You know, the purpose of ultra processed food is to increase shelf life and make it cheap and make it very tasty, okay? And so I really think the um, the essence of healthy foods is really how much life that food has. How dead can you make a food when you're cooking it five times using massive pressure, chemicals, heat? It's in the pet foods. It's in infant formulas. 67% of all teens' calories are ultra-processed foods. And so, yes, they all have chemicals and everything, but I think the thing that's really important to understand is the basic three ingredients. Number one, the synthetic sugars, the basic synthetic starches, which is like modified food starch or maltodextrin, and the synthetic oils, which are the unsaturated seed oils. Those are the things that you need to really pay attention to and make sure they're not in your refrigerator. All right, let's finally get to the, the purpose of this video, which is the list of the healthiest foods. Um, number one, beef, as in red meat, the exact food that everyone's saying to avoid. And I'm not talking about grain-fed, I'm talking about grass-fed, grass-finished. And so you can't just lump in grass-fed cows that are on pasture, that are rotated with all the processed meat. And also, I've never met anyone who is allergic to beef. Beef is high in glutamine. Glutamine heals your gut. In fact, it's the highest source of glutamine. And so many people have gut inflammation. This is why someone that goes on a beef diet or a carnivore diet starts to uh, heal their gut and a lot of other inflammatory conditions. You notice I didn't say chicken. Chickens are fed grains which really dramatically increase the omega-6 fatty acids. However, there are certain chickens that are soy and corn free that you can get, which I don't know where you can get them, but they're much healthier. All right, number two, wild-caught fatty fish, like salmon, for example. I mean, an average person, at least in the U.S., consumes 32% of all their calories in the form of the seed oils, and number three, which is shellfish, clams, oysters, shrimp, lobster, crab, things like that. You not only can get the omega-3 fatty acids, but you can get all the trace minerals and you get high quality protein. I mean, oysters are just loaded with zinc. Then number four is eggs. I think it's really important to buy the highest quality eggs that you can find, uh, organic, pasture raised, super amounts of nutrition, especially in the yolk. They're also very high in choline, which can help a fatty liver. Okay, number five is fermented vegetables. I'm mainly talking about either sauerkraut or kimchi. And the reason I put those in the list is because they're great probiotics. But sauerkraut has like 10 times the vitamin C of any vegetable. It's loaded with the prebiotics, the fiber, and the probiotics, which are the microbes. Plus, it's made from cabbage, which has a lot of great things for gut health, glutamine. And I think a lot of people don't realize that these microbes contribute so much to your health. I mean, just take a look at what happens after an antibiotic to your health. It goes right down the tubes. So we need to emphasize foods for our probiotics. All right, number six, I'm gonna include the leafy greens. That could be anything from arugula to spinach to just high quality lettuce that's grown on soil. You also have folate, vitamin C, you have potassium, and magnesium. Yes, it's true that spinach is high in oxalates, but if you consume cheese with spinach 
or, or you cook your spinach, you can reduce oxalates. Number seven, organ meats. I personally don't like liver, even though I know it's super healthy. I can't eat it for some reason, but I do like cod liver and I get it in a can. It's loaded with omega-3 fatty acids and it has a lot of other good things and I like the taste. It doesn't taste like liver. Number eight, certain herbal spices. And I'm talking about garlic, uh, onion, uh, sage, thyme, sea salt, which is not an herb, but it's just something I want to throw in there, basil and cinnamon. All these herbs have special compounds that can help in various ways. Now, there's one popular video. I explain a lot more about the number one food that is the most anti-inflammatory. And I want you to know more about this. So check out this video. I put it up right here.